Hey guys, it's Alex from 7th Hour Films, and welcome to, I guess what I'm going to call the mid-season finale wrap-up, or round-up, I suppose. Whatever. Um, today, uh, December the 10th, is when a bunch of videos are going to go up. We're starting with the Supergirl mid-season finale, and then we were going, uh, and then we are going to move on to The Flash, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow, Gotham, and... I will also be doing a full season review of the Orville. Fring clock. Anyway. Um, yeah, because the Orville actually ends. Uh, well, this season ends. It's not a mid-season finale, so. Um, yeah, so we're starting with Supergirl. Uh, this is episode 9 of season 3, Rain. So, um... The basic plot synopsis is that basically while everyone's, you know, chilling out at a Christmas party, um, John and Kara get an alert from the DEO, they have to leave, and they go to basically just a crop field, and when Supergirl flies up, she sees an image burnt into the ground, and it's an old Kryptonian symbol, and what happens is that these symbols start popping up all over National City. And she's, and Kara is trying to, you know, go through everything to figure out what the symbol is. She doesn't recognize the symbol, despite, well, she obviously recognizes that it's Kryptonian, she just doesn't know what exactly it means. Until eventually, we, uh, we get a call from the Cult of Rao guy, uh, I don't remember the character's name. Hang on, Darby wants in. Please come in, please come in, please come in, please come in. Oh. Okay, he didn't come in. See, Darby has this little game where he'll bark at the door, and then he won't come in. Yeah. He, in reality, Darby wants me to come outside, but it's like 38 degrees outside, and I'm not doing that. So, I'd rather talk to you guys about Supergirl. Um, so yeah, so Kara basically meets up with the Cult of Rao guy. Um, I think the actor's name is Chad Lowe. Um, he, obviously they set this up in a previous episode, this whole Cult of Rao that that guy did. Um, it was a really interesting episode, and phone's ringing, which is another thing that can interrupt me. Ignore the phone. Um, that was a really interesting episode. I wish I had done a video on it. Uh, that can also lead into, if you watched my Crisis on Earth X review, uh, which I doubt you have because that's a really long video and not a lot of people have that kind of time, but find the time, go watch that, it's a great video. I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun making it. Um, in that video I said that I, I don't know if I should really do like a, uh, like, do reviews of every single episode for all the shows, or if I need to do, like, a weekly show. Uh, the decision I've come to is that if, if an episode it has a lot of things that I could talk about, then I'll do a review. If not, then I'm just not going to talk about it. Like, uh, for instance, and I'll make this quick. For instance, like, let's say last season I was doing reviews of The Flash. Well, the episode I would do... I, or I would do an episode of, like, you know, the episode where they revealed that Savitar is Barry Allen from the future. I probably wouldn't do a goofier, or I wouldn't do an episode like, say, Abracadabra. Well, and maybe that's a bad example, but you kind of get the idea. So, so that's kind of what I'm going to try to do. If there's an episode where I think, yeah, there's a lot of material here that I could really discuss and, you know, and I think it'd be fun to do a review. Then I'll do a review. If not, then I won't. So, um, anyway, back to Supergirl. So we get the Cult of Rao guy, and he basically explains that he heard, he learned from old prisoners of Fort Roz. Remember Fort Roz from season one? That was a thing for a little while. Um, like, there was, like, a disgraced priestess or something, a disgraced Kryptonian priestess who taught him about the world killer. Something that has been part of Krypton 
I think they even said like part of Krypton's prehistory, like before they started you know writing history, which is actually really interesting. Um, but yeah, they kind of said it's like it's this world killer is a god older than Rao, which is interesting. I'm really, I really like the stuff that they uh, are doing with Rao and stuff like that, like with this religious stuff, because that's always really fascinating because. We've never heard of a Kryptonian religion. I mean, I'm sure it's in the comics and stuff, but, you know, they're not going to bring in a Kryptonian religion in, you know, Christopher Reeve's Superman. They're not even going to do that in, you know, Man of Steel or something like that. So this is really interesting. Um, so, yeah, they ba he basically explains that this world killer, well, it's just that, a world killer, a demon, a devil, and the only person that the only person that can stand before it and challenge it is Kara. Because to him, Kara is a god. And so this is her purpose, to face the world killer who he calls Rain. So, yeah. Um, meanwhile, while this is all happening, um, <laughs> while this is all happening... Uh, Lena and James are spending some time together, uh, working a case, actually. Well, not, working a case makes them sound like detectives, but basically, they're trying to figure out, they're also trying to figure out who is doing all this symbol stuff, you know, who's making all these Kryptonian symbols, and they come to the conclusion that it's Morgan Edge, uh, General Talbot from S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Adrian Pastar, Pastar, Adrian Pastar, I think that's it, um, I'll stop referring to him as Talbot. Um, but I, I brought that up because in my season premiere review, I didn't actually say the character's name because I didn't, I didn't catch it immediately. Now I caught it. It's Morgan Edge. Um, so, yeah. They kind of go off to see if it's Morgan Edge, and someone goes and tries to kill Lena because that's just a regular thing now. I think doesn't... I thought I saw somewhere, or I, I, maybe I heard this right or not, but someone asked, like, Lena, like, are you okay? And she's like, oh, yeah, just my quarterly assassination attempt. So, that was funny. I like Lena. But this leads to a possible shipping of Lena and James, otherwise known as Lames. Um... Which is the only time I'll call him James, by the way, is for lames. Uh, otherwise, it should be Lemmy, because he's Jimmy. I mean, no one... Yeah, it's, it is interesting, because I, I don't... Whenever I watch a Supergirl video, they generally call him Jimmy, which is interesting. It's, they generally call him Jimmy Olsen, but whatever. They still call him James on... Um, on Supergirl, so I guess I should call him James, because that's what they say. But, anyway. So, and the only reason I really bring up lames is because after this episode of Supergirl, I went on to the Supergirl hashtag on Twitter, which was a bad idea, but, um, but I went on because I wanted to hear what other people were saying about this and stuff, and, again, this was a bad idea because... I've gone to the Supergirl hashtag before on Twitter, and it's not been good. Like, like especially, um, okay, like, on the episode where they went to Mars, uh, which was another great episode. I wish I had reviewed that, too, because that was a really great episode, too. Um, well, I, I would say, except for the subplot in there with uh, Maggie's father, but... When I went on to the hashtag, everyone was praising it. It was so amazing. And I'm sitting here thinking, that was horrible. Like, really, really horrible. Now, the acting... Acting was excellent, actually. That's the thing, is I will never say that the acting on here is bad. The writing was particularly bad with his rant. Uh, and I know I'm off topic on this episode, but that rant was particularly bad. But everyone on Twitter loved it, and sure enough... Everyone on Twitter was pissing their pants out, out of frustration. That's not that's not a term you use. But okay, everyone everyone was pissed off about lames, 
And they were like, oh, you're just trying to take away from Super Corp, which is the Supergirl Lena uh, ship. You know, because L Corp, Lena, you know. And my, ins my reaction, because see, here's the thing. I don't want to be a hypocrite because a lot of people were saying that Lena and James is really forced. And I will agree with that. I will, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to sit here and say it's a great relationship. It's not. It's, it's forced. It's unnecessary. I'll say that. You know, I'm not, I'm not a hypocrite over here. Um, it sounded pretentious. Um, I, okay, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I will call out, yes, Lena and James is forced. I've said that, you know, the subplot with Alex and Maggie was forced. This is also forced. That was bad writing. This is bad writing. It's, it's unnecessary and serves nothing to the plot. But, why is, why is my phone lighting up? But wait, wait, why did my phone light up? Oh, I got a text message, that's why. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry, but my phone lit up. I was like, oh no, is the recording going to stop? No, I got a text message. Anyway. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to try to make this quick. Um, you know, let me, can I, one second. Okay. Um, so. I should stop the recording and respond to that, actually. Yeah, okay, so, um. Oh, I didn't even do a sync for this. Uh, three, two, one. Luckily, I can go back in and sync that. So, um, one second. And I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, also, you might hear some barking out there. Darby likes to bark at things at this time of day. So, uh, anyway. Uh, I was talking about lames. Um, I am... Oh, yeah. I was going to say, because... Yes, it is forced, and I will call them out on it. And if it's really bad writing, I'm going to call them out. I'm going to call out the show on that, too. But I am willing to accept lames if it pisses off the Super Corp people. That this is my sort of... This is sort of my, my Dark Knight moment. It's just, some men just want to watch the world burn. Watch the wine. This is totally my world-burning moment. I just... If it pisses off people that ship Kara and Lena, then so be it. Um, because they are obnoxious on Twitter. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm calling all you out. And now, Supergirl Show, I will call you out if the Lena James stuff is bad. And I just got another text message. Let me just see. Okay, cool. Um, I don't need to respond to that right away. So, so yeah, um, so yeah, lames, I'm alright with if we can watch the world burn. Now, if, now, if it keeps persisting, I'm, I'll probably call you out on it, but for this episode, I don't mind. Um, anyway, what else is there to talk? Well, I guess, you know, there's the elephant in the room, Rain. Um, so Rain has sort of... Well, we've been developing her character because, okay, I bet you in the season one, or the season one, jeez, in the season premiere that I did, the season premiere review I did, I probably mentioned that there was just this random, like, mother and child in the episode. Well, that random mother and child became, you know, major characters. So, this whole season we've been building up the character of Sam? I think it's Sam. The daughter is Ruby. I think it's Sam. Yeah. One second. Okay, so we've been building up the character of Sam, and at a point we just found out she's Kryptonian, um, and we've they revealed that not only is she Kryptonian, she is Rain. She's the world killer, and so 
the rain persona has kind of taken over her. It's um, I don't I don't want to go as far to say it's like a Jekyll and Hyde thing, but it's pretty close. Um, I don't know, cause, cause okay, she was at the Christmas party and she seemed fine. She just seemed like Sam, and then and especially because she went on this whole trip and found her kind of fortress of solitude, and then in this episode she woke up and she was like, I don't remember going on a trip. So that was interesting. Um, but then, she comes out in full... Co she, okay, well, she sees something on the news, something bad. And she's like, I have to go serve justice. Because that's kind of what they're also building her up to be. Is, you know, she brings justice with murder. She, it's kind of like a Punisher thing, when you think about it. Um, but I digress. Um... So, she sees something, she's like, I have to go dispense justice. And she get, she does that shot, you know, opens the shirt, there's her costume underneath. But, you know, it's the rain costume, it's not Supergirl, obviously. Um, they love doing that shot in this show, which is interesting. Um, so, yeah, she'll go, and I, I don't know, it's like, I can't even say, like, the rain persona takes over. Because I'm not sure how much of it is her and how much of it is Rain. So, I don't know. Maybe it is a Jekyll and Hyde thing. Or maybe it's like if Jekyll and Hyde had an understanding. I don't know. It's it's interesting. Ow, my arm. So, Rain has been the one that's been, you know, etching all these symbols into National City. And eventually... Supergirl is like, all right, I'm going to respond to this person. How? And she goes, she flies over to Catco, and on the helicopter pad, she burns the Supergirl symbol, the S, into the roof. Which people have pointed out, well, that's going to be there forever unless they get another helipad. So, um, so yeah, and sure enough, the two of them meet Supergirl and Rain, and they duke it out. And it is the greatest fight this show has ever done. And I'm being serious. First of all, <laughs> so, so when they you know, go, they do that classic shot that the CW likes to do where they're running at each other and then fade commercial. CW loves doing that, but... Um, so when it cuts back after the commercial break, it cuts to just this, like, Christmas office party, like, at a business. Like, everyone's just happy they're at a, you know, a Christmas party at their work. And immediately I'm like, oh, they're going to come crashing into that office building and fight in there. Sure enough, they do. They crash in there. They start punching each other. They throw each other across the tables. I think Supergirl gets thrown into the Christmas tree. It's, it's almost a hilariously brutal scene, but it is brutal. Like, you actually... Feel every one of those punches. And so they stumble out onto the street. And, you know, they start making dents in the street because they're so powerful. And Rain gets like this kind of a piece of metal with cement and whacks Supergirl. She actually starts bleeding, which is interesting. And, like, this is actually, this is, it's almost hard to watch because... He's like, this is the most, like, effed up Supergirl has gotten from a fight. Like, like you see it, there's the black eye, blood everywhere, she's kind of getting swollen. It's really brutal. Imagine, like, okay, at the end of uh, Winter Soldier, when uh, the helicarrier is crashing, and Bucky just starts punching the crap out of Steve. All that, like, swollen and damage to his face. Imagine that on Melissa Benoist. And you got Supergirl in this. It's not as bad, I, I will say. It's not as bad, but it's brutal. It's it's kind of tough to look at. But, but yeah. And by the, no one helps her, by the way. No one goes out there and help, goes out there to help her. Not even Jimmy. Jimmy, who's on the street, actually. Him and Lena are on the street while Supergirl and Rain are fighting. And they established earlier, because during that assassination attempt on Lena, um... 
I get Lena gets knocked out or something, and Jimmy, just his shield comes out of nowhere. So he's always had that shield, which that's another thing, is that Guardian has not really been in this season at all, with the exception of he was at the beginning of Crisis on Earth X, but that was a different Earth. That was a different Jimmy, so it doesn't count. Um, so he busts his shield out of nowhere, finally. He can be Guardian again. Um, but yeah, he doesn't do that when Rain is out there. He's He probably looks at her and is like, oh shit, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So, okay, Jimmy kind of makes sense, but mon is here. His wife, who everyone keeps calling Saturn Girl, is here. We don't really know her powers, but I'm sure she has powers. They say she's in the Legion of Superheroes, which mon founded. And John is there. Hello, John. John should be out there helping Supergirl. Heck, when Supergirl had the red kryptonite and was, like, evil, John had to go out there and fight her and he actually did a decent job against her so no one goes out there to help her and eventually rain just drops her off a building she falls she almost dies pretty much in fact this is where the episode ends is that they go they get her they bring her to the deo she's in critical condition gone see you in january that's literally it so so yeah, um, this was a great episode. I'll say that right off the bat. Uh, up right off the bat. We just spent like, what, 20 minutes recapping this episode? Um, yeah, this was a really great episode. I really, really liked it. And I will say, Supergirl has really gone up this season. Like, I've, there's, it's like, there's almost a, consistently, a consistency. Even though, yes, we had some of the, the Sanvers, the, uh, Sawyer, Maggie Sawyer, Alex Danvers, ship. We had some of that, but that ended. Yay, no more pointless romance. I'm sure everyone is tired of me saying that. Write a romance that's relevant to the plot. Monel and his wife are relevant to the plot. So, Monel was relevant to the plot last season. You gotta write things relevant to the plot. Barry and Iris are relevant to the plot. Um. Oliver and Felicity are not relevant to the plot, but we'll get to that when I, after I watch Arrow. Uh, it hasn't aired yet from when I'm recording this. But we'll talk about that, I'm sure. So yeah, this was a really good episode. I'm really interested to see where we're going with Rain. Rain, who seems to be the first overarching villain of a season. Because season one, we thought it was Astra, but she died quickly, and then it became Non and Indigo. And then season two, we just had a bunch of stuff until eventually Rhea decided she was the villain in the last eight episodes. So yeah, it's this is nice that we kind of have an actual overarching villain. Like a Flash villain, or an Arrow villain, or a Legends villain. So yeah. Um, is there anything else I really want to discuss... Um, bring back Guardian. And that's it. And don't screw up Lames. If Lames sucks and has nothing to do with the plot, I'm gonna call you out on it. I'm... Mark my words. See, I have words. Mark them. Don't. You don't have to. Sound like an a-hole when, when I say stuff like that. Like, I'll call you out on it. It's like, yeah, whatever. But yeah, if it sucks, I'm going to point that out. But so far, it's serving its purpose of making the fandom burn. So yeah, maybe that'll be the thumbnail. <laughs> it's just me going like, hmm. Um, yeah, so stay tuned. I don't know when I'm going to be getting these videos out. I might like post them on an hourly basis. So, okay, let's say this one goes up at noon on Sunday. Tune back in at 1 o'clock, and we will talk about The Flash. So, yeah. With all that being said, end cards are going to pop up right about now. You can click on those. There should be an Arrowverse playlist right down here where you can find a bunch of other Arrowverse videos. And to stay up to date on when I will be reviewing Supergirl episodes, you can follow me on Twitter at 7th Hour Films. I'm Alex from 7th Hour Films, and I will see you guys later.